For those of you who heard the update about uh, Pastor Kyla pleading guilty to the charges while four or five other high-ranking Providence people denied the uh, charges and claimed innocence, people are now confused. Why would Pastor Kyla do something like that? Was it for a plea bargain or, or was she scared? But for me, it's obvious. I mean, she's married to Pastor Sky, so when it came to the choice between life in prison and life with Pastor Sky, life with Pastor Sky just seemed unbearable, and prison was an easy way out. Some people may be asking themselves, Chris, why are you in a tight enclosed space? Why are you wearing a seatbelt? And why are you donning a golf polo? Well, don't worry about it. Just go on with your life and don't worry about it. My wife, Ina, is really enamored with all these new podcasts that uh, Sky has been putting together. You know, the manhole and the uh, powder power puff girls. And Sky was worried about um, not being able to find enough girls to uh, do a podcast in a rebuttal to the guy's manhole. But that's kind of strange because criticizing men is something that's biologically and evolutionary ingrained into their very being. So, you know, when push came to shove, he had no trouble finding enough women to do that. My wife, uh, she uh, adorably calls the Powerpuff Girls because she has no idea what the Powerpuff Girls are. She didn't grow up watching Cartoon Network. Um, she's from a third world nation, so she uh, calls them the Puffy Girls. So then... <laughs> A mental image that comes to my mind is a group of four or five, you know, gently overweight girls talking in a podcast room. <laughs> so the puffy girls, that's what Ina calls them. The other day, I unintentionally pranked my brother. So we thought we were being nice when we gave him some really expensive, high quality dog food. And uh, so he fed his dog that, that food. And now his dog won't eat anything, anything less than that. Any subpar dog food, it won't touch. Now he has to buy the expensive stuff for the rest of his life. For those of you who don't know, June is Pride Month. And in honor of Pride Month, uh, Sky on his podcast was talking about how the most uh, tempting thing for a guy is pride. Yes, gay pride. Above, above sexuality, above, um, you know, lusting after a woman, it's pride. Now, not gay pride, um, but, you know, being proud, being full of yourself. And he said one of the ways that a man is humbled is when he finally has children and he has to put somebody above himself. But I also think just getting married knocks you down a few levels. It's like getting kicked in the balls repeatedly because... Your wife is always cutting down your ego and uh, always dropping you down a level. So one example is when I went sledding with my wife. It was winter and the hill was very big and glassy and the snow was packed down and wet and it was very fast. So we would go down this really big hill really quickly and I wipe out at the bottom and I do a few somersaults and I black out for two seconds and I feel like I just got whiplash. And uh, my wife comes running over and you know, 
you think she's gonna say, oh, Chris, are you okay? Oh, what can I do to help you? But no, she's like, Chris, I told you not to do that. Chris, why did you do that? And she continues kicking me while I'm down over and over. And uh, this is an example of how marriage uh, can really take down your pride. The last person to visit us in Minnesota, we had an excellent time, was uh, Brandon Pleshik from California. Um, Brandon Pleshik is a paid uh, government employee. The government uh, pays him to inspect eggs. <laughs> so like when I walk in the store, I'll be like, please show me all of your eggs on display. And, uh, he came to Minnesota not by his own choice and volition, but because he was forced to by the government of California. They sent him to an egg conference. It was excellent. Um, the USDA is uh, spending a ton of money to find out once and for all which came first, the chicken or the egg? And it's up to blend and flesh it. Uh, we had an excellent time while he was here. Brandon Pleshik is very funny. He cracked me up so many times. Um, before he exited uh, the great state of Minnesota, we went kayaking down the Mississippi. Dan, look at that gorge. It's gorgeous. Revisited his childhood and went to an arcade, uh, kind of, kind of like your parents' basement, filled with sixty arcade games from the nineteen forties all the way up to present day. So, if you ever visit Minnesota, I will take you there. Um, Brandon Pleshik. Um, loves to exercise. He did that a lot. And I was impressed because Brandon Pleshik is in his 40s. And uh, they say after age 35, you lose 1% of your testosterone and 1% of your muscle mass all the way until you shrivel up at the end of your life and die a flabby, muscleless heap of flesh and uh, he was uh he was teaching me a lesson in how to get to shape he did two laps around our lake that's like five six miles he was speedy in the water swimming <clears throat> can't think of any more egg puns dang it Anyway, as I was saying, June is Pride Month. And uh, once again, not the Pride of Man Month, but actually it is the Pride of Man Month uh, in a way. I was uh, clued in to the Pride flag being revamped when we went kayaking down the Mississippi River with Bland and Pleshik. When we got to the very end, I saw this flag and it had like a sideways triangle on it and it had more colors than there are in the rainbow. And uh, I was like, what's that? And my friend said, oh, I think maybe that's the rowing flag. You know, rowing where you, a bunch of dudes uh, like what is it, like 20, 20, 30 shirtless, sweaty dudes right butted right up next to each other, rowing with all their effort, thrusting the paddles into the water. Uh, he said, maybe that's a pride flag mi mixed with a rowing flag, which would be ironic because 
if there was any sport that um, exemplified Pride Month, I think it would be rowing. But no, it was a revamped Pride flag and it had every color on it. And uh, uh, even white and uh, you know, black. And, and it now represents more than just pride. It also represents uh, minorities of people that have been oppressed. So uh, there's, a, there's a stripe on there for the straight black male. And uh, there's a stripe on there for brown, brown people. And you know what? They, the only color that they left out, even though there was a white um, stripe on the flag, it didn't represent the uh, straight white male. No, it. Uh, I think it represents non-binary people. Uh, and so the only people excluded are white males and Asians. It feels like I don't. I don't think there was an Asian stripe on there. But everybody, every other subgroup of human uh, across the sexual spectrum and the uh, racial spectrum is represented by it. So I got to thinking, you know, I feel underrepresented and kind of left out. And you know, feeling left out is not a good thing in, in Providence. So I, I figured, you know, I need a flag of my own to represent my heterosexual maleness. So what about just a plain white flag? But then I remembered, you know, the only time a plain white flag is flown is in war when you surrender. So you just can't win anymore. They they cornered us. Though those gays they're they're pretty good at chess. You know, either you go with the pride flag or you surrender. They got us.